All right. So today we're going to jelly print and we're going to specifically jelly print on napkin linings and tissue that can be used in collage. Um, you can't see it, but I have my large gel press. You can probably see the reflection. If you hear me talking to people, it is people in the chat. Um, this is a live recording from Ustream. If you're watching on YouTube and you're getting bored, just fast forward through it. Thanks for watching. Hi, Shauna. All right, so I'm just going to start by, I do a fairly, is Kathy here yet? Good. Um, I do a fairly thin layer of paint. I don't do too much paint when I use the napkins or the tissue because if you have too much paint, then they'll want to tear and you're not doing a cleanup you're, you're just if you're going to do more than one layer you have to let them dry so I'm going to start trying to think what color I want I'm going to do some words um, trying to think what I, I have a lot of turquoise I'm trying to think of a color that would be in there. I think I'm going to start out with just a black. And this is just Americana black craft paint. I use both the fluid acrylics and the I use the heavy body sometime. I've used a variety of paints. So I'm just going to roll out and it's going to be hard for you to see the paint right now because it's black on the black craft mat but it's a thin layer. It's not real thick. And I put some, these are DecoArt uh, Andy Skinner stencils. And I like them on the napkins because I can take apart and use the words. So I'm just going to put those backwards. Though for the napkin, it doesn't really matter. And I'm not going to get all of him unless I put him upside down. And I didn't flip him over. But like I said, on the napkins, they're it won't really matter. Let me not use him this time. This is the one that's French, got the Paris, and I'm going to turn it sideways, upside down. And then these are letters and numbers. And these are just letters. And that'll just give me a variety. Now, these are the larger napkins. It's a single layer. And I'm, it's going to fit this whole plate. And you're going to just lightly tap. And then you just want to work your way, tapping down, so that you're making contact through the stencil. You can take a dry brayer if you want that's not wet and roll it to get. You don't want it to move too much on you because these are words and numbers. So I don't want it to wiggle, which is why I usually just use my fingers. And I can see the area that I'm getting. I'm not getting in that Paris one very and I may have not moved fast enough over on this side paint dries in this room and it's warm outside today so I have problems with uh, the paint drying. I can hardly pull a second print. So 
So this side's not going to come out very good because I probably took too long. And then you want to gently pull with even pressure. Now I don't usually add a second layer because I will tear this up and use it. Now I'll add a second layer to this, but I'll use this. So what we can do is we can cut this off. This I'll use in collage and the white part will go clear. So you'll just see the black words. So I'm going to lay that aside and I'm going to let that dry. And we'll come back and add something to that one. And you'll see when I go to pick up on a piece of paper, I'm just going to get some scrap atlas. I really like these atlases that you can get and usually people are willing to give them to you. They're going to throw them away because they cover the whole big plate. Now if you're new to jelly plating, you might want to consider the 8x10 or the 5x7 size that fits. See we got a good print over here, but we hardly got anything here. Some of this might show up in our next print. So let's use, I'm going to use paper and I think I'm going to go with a gray and a silver. And I'll pick up most of that. I'm also going to add this uh, zinc, which is kind of a gunmetal gray. Just a little bit of that in the dazzling metallics. So the black, this will do a cleanup print and it should pick up some of that black. And again, I'm going to do that on matte paper. Use this same paper. And then I'll take this napkin edge. Thanks, babe. We go ahead and shut that. And I'm just going to put the napkin edge down on this back side. And it picked up most of it. I'm going to really just gives me a nice kind of silver strip that I can use. So that didn't get anything up. Got a little pattern in there. That might be cool on the next print. Yeah, I have the 5x7. But the napkins I had today were big. So that's a pretty cool cleanup print. you can see the details so if I do like a jelly print where I do a house this makes like good roofs okay and I'm not gonna clean it up I'm gonna smear that one splodge out I'm gonna go to bronze I'm gonna and these are Reeves acrylics that come in a set of four. And I keep tossing. There's not enough places when you're jelly printing to put stuff. 
Hi, Mildred. Yeah, I found that the retarders just, in my opinion, sort of make it gunk up. Um, this is a champagne color. And a little Venetian gold. I'm just going to make a mixture of metallics. And I want... Let's just spread this out and see what we have. This is mink pearl. Okay, that's pretty good. And that's really wet. So that should work. And I will tell you, I use my brayer paper too. Let's do this has been a really good stencil that I've liked in the napkins. Yeah, I think I'll do a little bit of this print. And some of this. And on this one, I'm going to use a piece of the sewing tissue. I want the writing upside down, and I don't care that there's text. And again, you're going to kind of pat it down. I got some wrinkles. I don't really care. I'm going to take the dry brayer and make contact. And then the main thing when you use the tissue or the napkins is you want to pick up and apply even pressure and just soft and gently pull up. This, yes, I did tweet, Vicki. I tweeted twice, actually. So this might be hard to see on camera. Yeah, and then I'm going to let that dry. All right, let's do, there's not much of a print there. So what I'm going to do is take another piece of tissue, or actually I'll take a napkin. This napkin's, um, Xander sent to me and the there were black napkins so the second layer had a print already had the black was still on there so let's try adding this copper to this as a background and then we'll let it dry and then we'll add something to it And I'm not expecting to get like a, a clear stencil image. It's probably going to be more of a solid. And I'm just gently taking my time and pulling. So that gives me a copper field. So let's let that dry. And it didn't tear. It did pick up a little of the black. So I'm going to let that dry. And actually when that dries, it'll kind of strengthen. Now it did leave a lot of really cool wrinkles in here that I think we'll get when we pick up the next layer. 
So there's some black and there's some copper. So I'm thinking... something light in color. I think I'm going to go some red violet. And add a little white. And I'll get some kind of pink mixture in there that the copper will show up on. Kind of an orchid color. There's a bubble underneath my plate. It's not making, like it's squishy. It's weird. Okay. Right, and I'm going to go with the same stencils, basically just to kind of keep it moving fast. Um, I'm going to add this one here on the edge, and this one over here on the edge. And I'm going to take another napkin. Put that down. This one you'll probably be able to see a little better because it's going to be darker on the So, again, the white parts will go translucent. Now, on this one, it's not going to go completely translucent because it's got that black dye, but it should be interesting. And then I don't use it all as one piece usually. I cut it up muse pieces. Let's pull this off. We've got a much cleaner um, image this time. but the copper's still in there and some of that black and we'll use that needs to dry just a little bit. We'll do a cleanup print. Thinking either the light gray or the the I think I'll just go with the Titan buff. And and this is uh artist loft and they call it unbleached titanium and I hate artist lofts they don't want to close so I'll get that rolled out and we'll put this one on a piece of paper rather than a napkin I'll put the atlas. Normally I tear. Okay, put that there. And then I'm going to take this napkin and put it on the edge again. And let this make good contact. Because you want that last layer of paint to kind of get tacky enough 
to pick up the dried layers of paint. And I'm not going to get much on the napkin here. So I am going to try again and make contact again. I'm just trying to cover up that strip. That picked up a little bit more. I kind of like that. Uh, if I keep doing that, I might get like a striped tissue. I'm just jelly printing to show Kathy how to use the napkins and then it will end up just being used. Now see I had too much of the titanium. But that's a good background. I'll let it dry and I'll add something on top of it. So let me take another piece and I can pick up more. Now, a lot of times before I jelly print, I look at my stash of papers and see what colors I'm needing. But usually I just go with, the, you know, grab things, try them. Sorry, I'll probably be it's barbecue. And I would say that one's not done, but it's a good base background. Yeah, I even like these little bits I save because they get used. I, I am going to go ahead and clean my plate real quick because that's I'm gonna switch so this is just hand sanitizer and baby wipes I just want to switch I want to get away from that um Kind of mauve, muddy. Color. In fact, when I add something on top of one of those, and it'll go in the background then. So let's go with Doxine Purple and I'm going to add silver into it. And I'm going to add a little Dazzling Metallic Purple Pearl. Let's see what we get there. I like to mix uh, the metals with colors and see what you get.
and this silver didn't want to. So I'm just trying to get a more even mix. And let's use him. And then we'll go with some numbers and letters. And then we'll use the other steampunk stencil. And I'll just put letters backwards in this corner. I'm going to move that paint. I'm hitting bottles of paint that are in front so the stencils don't want to lay down. All right, and then we'll grab this one and we'll put this on top of that. I want all of him so I put it up at the top and then we're going to grab our tissue and I just want to pick up a purple strip along there so that kind of gives us something interesting going on on that piece of I think this could end up really cool if I just keep doing little strips No, um, Margaret, if you want to send them, I'll just email me and I'll give you my address. They'll, if you get them in the mail, there'll be time. I have your name on the list anyways, because you told me. So I had your name on the list. So go ahead and mail them. I've got about half of the people on the swap have sent theirs and I've received them. Probably. If everybody gets them in the mail by the 15th, then we should have everybody's by the end of the month, and I can make the swap and get them back out in the mail. by the. I'm hoping on the 1st I can drop them off. Go. Oh, that one took the stencil up. So I think that turned out. It's real wet so he's backwards the numbers are backwards but if I use it in a background I will not care at all I got it this I got right but this one did you see I got the numbers backwards and then let's take this off And let's just add what we can pick up to this. It may cover a lot of it. And let's add a strip of the purple on this end. Of our napkin. Like I said, that's pretty interesting. Needs another silvery gray kind of. Yeah, you just send, if you mail them by the 15th, then we shouldn't have any problems getting everybody's by the end of the month. Okay, that's quite a bit of purple, but it's a pretty, pretty background, and it's got some grungy details. So maybe like a pop of copper on top of it, or a pop of a green, like a dark green on top of it would be good. Okay, and I'm going to leave that.
and I think I want to go with a green. and the silver again. So this is the silver metallic and then this is festive green and the dazzling metallics. I think that'll be pretty. Put a couple of these up. The dazzlings are thin, in my opinion. So I almost always add an opaque paint with it, which is my silver this time. And that's a really thin coat. And need to get the paint since I put that upside down I want to get the extra purple paint off but I'm not gonna worry about it too much and I like the letters this stencil goes both ways so it makes a good stencil Get the kind of the flourish there, and I'm going to add this on here. We'll see. And then I'm going to add a strip on the napkins up at the top. of the green. So there's that. Like I said, I think it needs a silver. like I need to put more pressure the that will say that's the one thing about the Andy Skinner stencils that I don't like on the jelly plate and that just modeled it's more modeled but again and you know as cut up as a building this will make a good background. Okay. And this will make a decent cleanup print, I think. I am going to switch stencils. Unless I can get... So I think I'll put... Not sure what color I want to pick that up with. I think I'll try the zinc. And the black pearl. And the silver stage. I think it is, or the stir. I think it's the silver sage, but I only use that one this time because oh, uh, just a little silver in there.
and it will be pretty tone on tone. I think it'll be kind of subtle. So you may not see it on the camera very well. And I'm just going to do a clean up. I think I'll, well, I think I'll go through some stencils. Use some stencil, different stencils. This one I haven't used before. That's a damask. Um, this is letters, but bigger. These are ones I cut on my silhouette, so they're thinner. And these are numbers. And let's take one of the big napkins from Xander that has sort of the darker tint. Let's pick up. I've really been liking using some of this gunmetal color on the napkins and I've used everything up that I had done in that color. Okay, and you probably can't see the print as much as I can. And then I'm going to take and just throw this on a piece of paper, on a map paper. And I'm going to throw this little strip down here on the napkin. And I think this is going to finish up our napkin. So that makes a pretty little collaged piece of napkin. And I think this is going to end up just being a background piece that I'll add something to. And it's got some wrinkles in the middle, but I don't care. Again, it's real modeled and probably hard to see on the camera. But let's add some layers to that. And we have a napkin to add some layers to that's dry now. So let's go black, I think. I want to try to pick up my stencils ahead of time. I like that one. I'm thinking buildings. So I'm thinking patterns that I would like on on buildings. That should be enough to cover the plate with some of the alphabet ones. And I'm just going to take the black acrylic and I'm going to add a little black pearl there's a little shimmer in there. And again, this is a fairly thin layer of paint. Okay, 
this giraffe pattern. The damask. The scribbles and kind of circles, basically. Uh, then I'm going to grab the napkin that we had earlier that we put the copper on that's dried. I'm going to add this down. And I'm going to roll out from the center. Oh, and I did tear that one, because, but that was my fault. Because I'm rushing, and I... So when I pick it up, I want to pick it up from the side, I think. It tore right in here. Normally it wouldn't tear. So I'm just going to pick it up from this side and pull gently and carefully. And I'm not going to worry about the tear. I'm stuck to my stencil there. There we go. You can see where it's torn here. But once it gets glued, so those will make really pretty buildings. I don't know if you can see the coppery color in the background. Now this won't go translucent because it's got the two layers of paint. But I can add it on top as an accent. And I'll cut it into four pieces. I wouldn't use it all together probably. Okay, let's see if I can get, if any more paint comes up on this tissue. This isn't even a full piece that fits the plate. And I'm just trying to lift off if there's some extra paint that I didn't get. I'm just using my hands to make sure that I make decent contact in all of those spots. I don't get any paint there. Might. And this will be real faint because I'm just trying to pick up any extra so there's a little and I'll use it on, it'll be on something else. Okay, pull that off. I'm going to let that dry. It's kind of wet right in here. Don't use your heat gun on your jelly plate. And I think I'm going to pick this up with some turquoise. It needs to dry in here. That little bit of black right there is kind of wet where the damask was. So I'm using uh, dark patina. And aquamarine from Traditions. If you haven't tried Deco Arts Traditions, this is a really good paint. It's basically, in my opinion, falls between. It falls between, it's a little thicker than a regular craft paint, but a little thinner than a heavy body. So I really like them. They are more expensive, but 
but you can, um, if you're trying to do, they're not as chalky. They have more acrylic in them. And I'm not putting a real thick layer because I'm going to do a cleanup. It may end up being a background layer with the black on it. And I can see the print of the stencils. And let's go ahead and just try putting this on a napkin. This napkin has a little bit of overbleed from the top layer, but I don't think it'll even show up. And again, I'm not worried about wrinkles. And we'll let this one dry, and then we'll print on top of this one. We may not get the black. We may just get some of the black. And just pull even pressure straight across gently not too fast and it'll lift All right, so I got the turquoise and you can see some of the black in the faint very shadowy so that'll be pretty if we add a pop of something on that and let's see if we can lift any of this up on here and it just gave kind of a turquoise haze to that I'm gonna use the back side too I'll try to get some of that off my plate So that one I'm going to call done. And you probably can't see the turquoise. I just added a real thin layer of turquoise. All right. Um, I'm just going to squirt some water. And take a piece of matte paper. And pick this up and whatever I get on there is whatever I get on there but it'll take up some of that it'll probably just put some turquoise it's real wet it'll just pick up some of that and I'll let that dry and use it again Uh, deli paper does clean up the plate pretty good. I'm just trying not to use hand sanitizer at this point right now. Okay, so we have that drying that we want to put something on. We can put something on this. This one's done. I think we want to put something on this one. Let's go with a real dark green. Like a dark hauser green. Or black, yeah, hauser dark green. Um, I mean, we're going to throw in a little zinc in there and some Fiesta Green. Let's see what we get there. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm gonna darken it up with some Black Pearl. It's not dark enough for where I'm putting it. I think it needs to be darker. 
So we should get a kind of a greenish gray. We'll add some more of the dark hauser. Still not used to this big plate. And I should have had my stencils ready. So I'm just going to start grabbing some of the same ones since they're here. I like this damask that I've been using a lot. That's new. Um, let's use this one. And we'll put circles up here. And uh, I think of it as a giraffe. It's like fractured triangles. And we're going to put that on here. And I want the whole damask, so I'm going to put it down, and then I'm going to take this tissue on the edge here and just put a piece of green on the tissue. Some more green on this end. That'll just give us some more pattern on that to start with. Uh, yeah, sometimes I use my little ones, and I'll tell you when I'm doing Paula's technique, I use two. I don't use my big one. When I'm doing like crusty bits and I want to do the layers like that, I tend to use my 8x10 and my 5x7. I do not use my little one, uh, round ones, and my 3x5. I don't. I thought I would like stamping with the three by five. Okay, that's pretty. Like cut up. You have to remember it'll be in a collage. And you can see that purple in the background with some of the silvery colors. And then I'm gonna put this tissue over here so I still feel like I have quite a bit of paint on here. that I could pick up. But I found when I tried to stamp with the 3x5, it just fell off the little plastic. I, and this is sticking because the paint's real dry. So I'm just pulling real gently. And that I'm just going to leave like it is because the tissue part will go translucent and you'll just get some of that pattern, the green and the black, and some of the text. And this is all just collage bits for me. If I really like a piece, then I'll use it as a background piece, as a whole, as a base. Okay, and I'm going to just stick this on. I'm just going to stick it on here. I don't know how much of it's going to come up. Oh, well, I was doing reverse paint on with the circle plates. I just find a hard time getting... Now, Zandra's really good at using her circle ones. I just never found that I could get a whole print with the circles. So, I just haven't figured out how I want to use them. Oh, see, I really like that. And I'll leave that with the map showing through. All right. All right, 
what do we want to do with this little I think I'm just going to do Titan buff and this time I'm going to use the fluid acrylic Titan buff and do a cleanup print it'll pick up all that stuff and this is almost gone trying to put some of these paints up as I'm done because I have a zillion things and my hands are really bad today this would freak Laura out just saying And I'm trying to do different color combinations than I usually do because what I find is I have a whole bunch in turquoise and I have a whole bunch in certain colors. But then when I go to do something, I can't find what I'm looking for. Uh, that's wet, so I need to use a different piece. I just tore that, but... Let's take a little bit of the end of this tissue and see if it'll pick up any of this up here. And I picked up most of it, and it's the same colors, so it goes on there just fine. It's just opaque. Yeah, and today, oh, I've got, I think I have two pieces. No, I don't. This may have dried too much and not made contact. All right, I'm going to get some, but not everything. But it's okay because I kind of like it. I like it because it goes with the map, and the map is still coming out. You can see. And now it is time to go ahead and clean it. In my opinion, every once in a while I gotta clean it. If I'm gonna switch color families or keep it from getting spots that won't lift up. I have not been having much luck with the cleanup prints today. And I find that I start using the same stencils, the same colors, and I have to really break myself of that. Go ahead and clean up my hands just a little bit. See, when I go through the tissue, some of the paint comes through the back side of the tissue on the napkins. When I do paper, it's not as, I don't get as dirty. Um, let's do, we need to put a pop of some, of something on this. Let's do copper. My copper's almost gone. Because, and I'm going to add a little red to that copper. I don't have my favorite red, which is a deep Cambian red. I almost bought one at Tuesday morning. See, so yeah, that might need some. Crimson. 
to darken it up a little bit. But when I opened, it was a jar. When I opened the first one up, it was dry. Uh, kind of like Brenda tweeted on her delusions. And when I opened the second one up, it was starting to dry out. And I thought, oh, that's why they're here. So, uh, no, I don't think so. All right. Should have made these decisions. All right, we'll do that alphabet. We'll do our friend here. He is backwards. We'll do this little floral. And that little lattice. Yeah, yeah, I use hand sanitizer. Now, every once in a while, I use um, mineral oil or baby oil when I want to give it like a good clean and condition it. I don't do it when I'm actually jelly printing, more like when I'm going to put it away. Now, this napkin has it has the paint layers on it is a lot stiffer. So it may not want to go down into the Skinner stencil here with the letters and the numbers. I actually like mine that I cut better because they're in that really thin over the ones that I bought in reality. We're just looking for a pop of red. Oh, this may be one of my favorites today, but that is my favorite, one of my favorite color combinations. And you guys can't see it probably, but it's just shimmery. Kind of a coppery red. And again, this won't go opaque when I use it because it's got so many layers of paint. Okay, and let's take this page and see if we can pick up any I'm going to give it a little spritz of water and see if we can pick up any more red. I'll just add some. Red here and there. So I like that because that just gave a little pop of red in the green, but you can still see the map. I don't know. I need to pick up some of that red right there. There's too much red. Okay, and let's try letting that dry. And then we'll put, I think, black and do a cleanup print. There's some moisture in there still. And we'll do a cleanup print on a piece of paper. And I'll add a little black pearl to it just to give it a little shimmer. Yeah, I like him in copper, but I really like red and teal. That's my favorite combination. I may have too much paint here. We'll see. I'm having a hard time getting used to the 
how much to put on this size plate. So I'm going to take some, I'm going to roll some back off. I'm covering all my lovely brighter paper. Okay, I want to be able to see some of the stencil pattern. Okay, I need a map page. No, you know what? I'm going to do it on this time. I'm going to do it on. Oh. This is the instructions to a sewing pattern, which I really like collaging with. I like the thin. I got a big crease in the middle, but I don't care. Again, I'm not looking for a whole piece of paper because I'm going to use it as a whole piece of paper. I'm going to tear it up and use it in collage. I want this one to sit and kind of dry so we can get all the layers. All right, I'm going to put up a few paints here so I can claim some space again. Some of these are a sample kit I haven't even used. I just go to the same ones, unfortunately, I guess. Alright. Still feels kind of wet. I have to turn my fan on because I am dying. <sighs> right, and I'm just pulling slow and I'm trying to get, and I don't know what I'm going to get. It may just be black and it'll get something added to it. That's the fun of the jelly plate. Okay. You can't see it, but it is a pretty coppery color. It's dark. Don't know if you're going to be able to see that. A rocket, maybe you can see. But again, it could be, it's a very good, like, background for something. So let's think of something. It, it, now it needs, like, a layer of white on it or something pale. that'll make it pop. And once you do enough pale, you could do another. But it is, it's got a very pretty color to it. So let's set that aside and let's... And it cleaned the plate really good. I will say that. Let's go with... I need to fold this on top of itself. Let's go with a white or a silvery. I've got an opaque white. That's what I'm trying to find. The big white I have is not opaque. Right, I'm going to go with an opaque white.
and we'll put something on it in white. And then we might add some And I'm not going to worry that I have a real uneven because if I don't get a heavier coat in all the places, I don't really care. All right. And I'm going to go with this crown, letters. circles, letters, that should work. And a lot of times I work back and forth between two prints. Okay, so see that made that pop. Now let's remember this combination. Let's uh, I'm gonna see if I can get any more white off there real quick. It's just the back of this piece. I just want to get clean out those stencil areas so I get a better cleanup print. So I'm just looking for ones that aren't clear enough and trying to pick up some of the excess paint before I take this off. Okay, I'm going to leave those stencils there because I think I'm going to use them again. And I'm going to get my blue-green PBO, which is like almost gone. And we're going to get just enough to maybe do this twice is what I'm hoping. I'm going to add a little bit of the Traditions. Aquamarine, it's the same basic color. All right, I'm going to do a cleanup with this. But I'm thinking about putting these stencils in a different configuration. And popping a little turquoise on part of one. I'm not I'm just gonna do part and the empty part. I want to see what it does on that white. Oh yeah, I like that. And then I'll, I'll use that. So let's go ahead and go with it and get some more up, off of there. hit right down in this middle. And up on that top again. Alright, I'm going to 
pull this off. And attempt to pick up most of that on here. Here's the back of this. I think this one turned out cool. Yeah, and it's got that little bit of white, allowed some of that turquoise to pop better. I actually even hit these circles just off. Okay. That might end up being pretty cool. That was just a little strip of it. We'll see though. Because this is kind of a, just a turquoise and a white. But we're still going to see some of the map. I will tell you when you do crusty bits and you use white on your first layer, it disappears. But this is just a good piece of turquoise collage. It's got some pattern to it. You can still see the map on it. So like this would make a good beach house because I can still add some details over and break the print up. All right. Um, Just do a little copper. Almost up. Like that. And we'll see if we can't just pick up a cleanup print and finish this up. And I'll show you what we got today. But the main goal was to show Kathy and the others how to print. On the tissue, we'll try this one on the tissue. I don't know what we'll get. We might not get a very good cleanup. We'll let it sit there for a minute and kind of dry. If you had a hair dryer, I'm going to take a sneaky peek. Oh, it's actually pulling up quite a bit. Now you may see just copper and mostly copper. And I'm pulling really slow because the tissue is pretty damp still. And you don't want it to dry on your plate. Like dry because then it will really stick. It's got to still be, and I'm just applying even pressure and pulling ever so gently. Oh, great, Kathy. P tweet some of your pictures so I can see what you ended up getting. And you get really neat wrinkles. Like, I think this piece here reminds me of leather it looks like patinaed copper because it's got that blue green in places I'm just going to let it lay down on the plate it'll stick but it'll come back up but you can see it and so you can see there's patina in here now I could let this dry and I could put a print through a stencil of a darker copper, or I mean not a darker copper, but a darker red or a turquoise. We can do that in just a minute if you want. We just need to let that dry, which doesn't take very long. 
and gray wrinklage here but like I think on the collaging it on the front of a journal or something if you wanted it to look like leather okay we want to I've got one called peacock that's pretty dark and a cobalt in the fluid so we'll do that and I'm gonna do something a little radical I'm going to put it up here and up here, and I'm going to take this sprayer and put this kind of in this corner, and then I'm going to take the crimson. And take the smaller brayer and I'm not really worried about if they mix uh, this is a much thinner layer the red but I'm not going to directly mix too much okay then I'm going to put For some reason, this needs to be more formal to me. So I'm going to put the damask up here. I guess I'll stick with my number concept. Uh, the giraffe here. And where is my little Moroccan grid that I really like? All right, now we're going to take that. This is drop just a little bit. It doesn't do a really good pickup. Usually you just get the top layer. It's a little too thin. And I don't know how close I got that laid down. Alright, and I'm gonna just prayer this down so I can get some pressure. Now again, my stencils, because I cut them out of the and I really would have let this tissue dry a little more but my stencils because I cut them out of the notebook paper are very thin yeah I let it dry just ever so little so it's not too wet like this one's pretty wet so I think I'm going to turn the fan down on it you don't want it to dry, Kathy. I'm going to let some air go on that and dry it just a little bit. Because this is actually, I should have waited a little while for the copper and the patina to dry. I'm rushing it. I would have just thrown it away and done it. Okay. And so when I pick it up, I want to pick it up and pull even pressure very slow like I said very very slow and keeping it even across the top so I'm pulling straight across until it picks up everywhere That turned out really pretty. So you've got the copper and the patina on these. And the red and the copper. Yeah, and I don't use a ton of paint. But usually on the napkins, I just do one layer when I'm doing the napkins typically what I do is just the one layer 
Let's see if we can get this to go on. The, I don't have any. I'm going to pick the side that's not black. The fan's not helping. Not my friend right now, the fan. So I need to turn it off. All right. I don't know what I'm going to get as far as this one goes. But typically what I do is I just pick up one layer of paint. And normally these are white. This one's got a pattern on it that Xandra thought was really cool, so she sent some to me. And I don't know how much I'm going to get because that may have dried. But I know we can get a really cool cleanup in just a minute. So typically I would just do one layer and then all this white would go away. So I got the turquoise, but I didn't get the red. And you can also stamp on this and use it. Uh, it was a damask on the silhouette dot. The, it was on their website. All the ones I've cut myself came from Silhouette. And this one was just a damask one that I found. I don't pay for the files much more than 99 cents usually. A lot of times you can get them on sale and they're 50 cents. And then I just play with the sizing of them. I can't, uh, like... I can't, the, what I cut out of is eight and a half by 11, a normal notebook piece of paper. So I'm not making stencils bigger, like this one's square, so it couldn't be that much bigger. But I just use a combination on my plate. And because mine are so thin, I don't have any problems getting the napkin. When I use the ones, this, the thicker miler, Mylar, this is hard to get through. This stuff from Andy Skinner is much harder. Yeah, yeah, you can do, and you can even go into your program and use geometric shapes and make, like copy and paste and make. Um, I'll show you one of the stencils I made with a combination. I'll find it just a second and we'll use it. We're going to do a cleanup with that. So we're going to let it dry. Now it's torn because of the way I cut it. But this one, let me put up so you can see it a little better. I don't know, that's not dark. Just a second. Let's see if it shows up on here. That'll show up better. They're dirty, so. So this one was a lattice with a floral, and then I added a fleur-de-lis, and then I added some smaller French fleur-de-lis. So it just made a combination. And so sometimes I take the stencils and do that. And I just use the cut and erase with one, and then I go in and add some of the other images. Kathy, if you email me, I'll email you some of my... You have a silhouette, right? So if you email me, Kathy, at... If you email me, I'll send you some of my silhouette files if you want to cut them. 
that I've made. I have some of them. Some of them I have lost over time. I guess they've gotten deleted. So I think we should pick this up. Let's just pick it up with the Titan buff. Which I just put away. And it's got the copper wrinkles in the background. I think we're really almost out of it. I'll just add a little uh, light buttermilk. Sometimes I use that for cleanup. It works just as well as Tide and Buff. And this is a cleanup, so I don't want a whole lot of paint. I want a fairly thin layer. Map paper I had down. Um, I think the damask was down here, so we probably want that more in its entirety. And let's add just to the back of this. And sometimes on these papers I use like this. I print on both sides because I never know which side I'll use. Like if I want a strip of teal. Okay. That was a really good cleanup one. And again, works for collage when you want to add something to it. All right, I'll show, we'll print this stencil and then I'm probably done. We'll print it on a napkin. So let's do it in a dark color. Here's a sapphire blue. I never have enough blues. I'm just going to put the paint. In fact, I'm going to add a little um, ultramarine blue because that's a little grayer than I probably wanted. I'm just going to do a, a napkin layer or a tissue layer. All right, so we'll put that stencil here and this stencil, which I use a lot. And a chevron. This is the last of those napkins. I'm not going to take the dark side. I'm actually going to take the lighter side. I mean, the dark will probably still show up. I don't know if you'll be able to see. I should have probably used, I didn't white paper. I may go ahead and use this stencil on another. One where you can see it on just white paper. This 
not too bad. So you can see. Then if I add this like in a corner, all this white will disappear. So I would cut and use this right here. I would probably cut right along here. And then I would get rid of, I would use a wet paintbrush and get rid of this edges around here and then lay that on something light colored that will have a, and the print will show through. And that's how I use the napkins. So we can probably get a cleanup on this. And let's use a green, a bright green. And I'm going to add a little of the green blue PBO, which again is almost gone. I need new PBOs, but I'm on a spending freeze, so. It's not happening. Right. Trying to pick up some of these tinsels that are just laying everywhere around me. And I do have some round stencils that I cut from my round jelly plate. Okay, so let's... See what we can get here. And we'll put this on map paper. Actually, I'm just going to use white paper. Just a couple pieces of white paper. And then just this back of this to and I don't wash my stencils. Yeah, I love the the veins. The blue may not have been dry enough. We'll see on this. Or there may not have been enough contrast. Oh, that's actually pretty right in this one. That'll, that I can use that. And again, I can definitely use that cut up, make a cute beach house because it's bright. All right, so let's take and see if we can get any more of this up off the plate. And then... So I'm done for the day. So what I'm going to do, I'm done printing, is I'm going to attempt to find baby oil. And I'm going to liberally put my baby oil on there. And I'm going to massage it around. It's also help you clean your hands if they're dirty. And I'm going to let that sit. For a few minutes. And I'm gonna get a couple of the baby wipes. Mm. 
look for and pull off the extra paint and it'll get especially those edges the crusty bits along the edges if you get really dry and I don't do this every time I jelly plate but if I'm wanting to condition the plate mineral oil, almond oil, baby oil I wouldn't use vegetable oil because it could go rancid. I'm not worried about cleaning all the oil off the plate. I'm just trying to get the paint off of it. In fact, if it's been a long time, sometimes I'll just add another layer and just rub it in and kind of let it sit. From my understanding is Mineral oil is one of the components. And you think you've got it clean, but I'm still getting paint residue up. And I will tell you that sometimes I even clean these because I found that when the paint, if I put it away dirty, that sometimes this paint will leave uh, marks in my plate. So sometimes these little crusty bits, you will over time get little bubbles too from the from little air pockets and it'll make little indentations in your plate but I've never noticed that they affect my prints and you can't get them I've never been able to get them out a hundred percent you know you can try and push them and just as soon as you get one out you'll get another one pop up so I, I've never been able to get it to adhere, you know, be bubble free. And I noticed on my first one, it's got those. Yeah, and if you don't get, I mean, it, it it's going to take some hang, and I wouldn't, you can just try with the, uh, if you did the napkin swap, you're going to have plenty of napkin backs. And I have mine labeled top and bottom on this one. But it really doesn't matter, I don't think. And do store it in your clamshell. Alright. Let me... I don't know where my clamshell even is right now. So let me just set that aside. I'll get it later. And I'll show you what we printed today. And this needs to be cleaned with Murphy's Oil because it's got... Now I can see that it's got parts where it's risen. Unless you want texture. All right, let me throw some of this stuff away and use a paper towel and get some of that oil off my hands real quick. I'm not worried about cleaning them. I'm just trying to get some of the baby oil. Oh, I found the clamshell. So let's put that up so it doesn't get damaged.
and I make sure it's closed because I live in a pretty humid but still hot and dry and sometimes it will get hot in my art room when I don't clean my stencils I'll be honest maybe they get a Murphy's oil bath occasionally during the year and I'll soak them they're kind of getting to that stage okay I'm just gonna start stacking some of the stuff and then we'll go through it we'll flip through it because it's all around me on every surface today. We actually got quite a bit printed when you think about it. Alright, so this was a napkin. Uh, I like this and I like this. I'll probably stamp on this. I'll probably stamp in red stays on. I have like a burgundy red and I'll probably stamp some text stuff in here and then I'll use that. Bye Patty. This is tissue. It's just sewing tissue and we did a cleanup with the copper and the little bit of turquoise and then we added the darker turquoise and the red. This was white on the first layer and turquoise. White will disappear if it's your first layer. If you're doing crusty bits, it doesn't work. You almost have to go from dark to light. You can't have a translucent color in your first layers. But um, it'll give it a chalky appearance. But it works because you can still see the maps. This was black and turquoise with red, and then we did a white, and then we popped some turquoise on top of it. And it's sewing pattern paper, so it's real thin. Uh, this was some layers on map with silvery, kind of some lavender, and then a green on top. This was the green, just on the map paper. This was just on a cleanup on the tissue. But it'll make a interesting background like to a start. This was copper with a pop of black. Uh, this is the only one that tore when I was doing it. It was my fault. I probably was too rough with the brayer. And this I'll probably cut up and do into buildings. This was a silvery gray with grungy with a little turquoise. This is hard to see until you actually probably use it. Some of the napkin will go clear and it's a silver pattern on the napkin. This was a purple on top of a mauve and um, unbleached titanium and you can still see the text behind some of that from the map. This was a coppery one layer. And remember, the tissue will go clear. So if I lay this down on something, you'll see the color from behind it. So it's hard to see now. Uh, this was just a little strip that we did on tissue that we were picking up different things. Made a little stripe. This was copper and red on top of a turquoise and black on the tissue. And I do like using just the white tissue better than like what Xander sent. This dark color does interfere with some of it. If you just use the white, and most of the tissues have the white, it works better. 
This is a blue. This was a cleanup, which again will make a great base for collage to cut up and add layers or add tissue on top of. This was just black on tissue, which is usually what I do with the tissue, is just do one color, a dark color, or a metallic that I can lay on top and pop. This is kind of a mauve on the tissue, napkin tissue. This was kind of a hot mess, but if I use it, cut it up, make a good corner or background piece. More of the blue on the tissue. This was just a cleanup piece that I kind of like how it came out. Kind of real grungy. It's even got some on the back that I might use. And I may just end up using like a small piece of it in something. And I will tell you that normally this stuck today because I put it, it was too wet. Normally I use pieces of the brayer paper too. I don't really waste anything. <clears throat> it can all be collage fodder as far as I'm concerned. That's what started. And I'll just probably uh, brayer on this again is what I'll do and then throw it away or find a use for it. I don't use the baby wipes. That's one of the few things I don't use. I don't use the napkins. I don't I don't know, I just don't like the flint, the lint like texture of the baby wipes. Um when I'm collaging, I like the thinner papers. If I'm using a want it to be a foundation piece, I like the thicker papers. So I do sometimes print if I'm gonna do like a jelly print. But today I was just trying to show Kathy how to print on the napkins. And it was kind of an impromptu. So let me stop the recording.